Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this new video entitled Prayer. And for the message, now I used to think that Jesus' counsel to pray without ceasing was a metaphor. It was just symbolic. I could not um, visualize, you know, in my opinion, when I look at it, I could not imagine myself just praying, praying. So, because for me, prayer was something of action. So I couldn't figure that one out. So I said that that's just symbolic. However, I have grown to realize that prayer is a real biblical culture. So for a definition, prayer involves an individual or a group talking and acting towards God, and God acting back towards the individual or group, and God answering. Now, the answers, God answers may not always come immediately. However, um, God um, gives one um, at a certain tone when one pray, when one prays, and so um, a tone and feeling. So he sets you at ease. Okay, so, and so for conditions of prayer. Um, now, time and readiness may filter into God's feedback. Um, yes, because sometimes God may have to bring you to a state of readiness whereby you'll be able to deal with the answer that he will give. Um, most of the time we think that we know all about ourselves, but it is God who is all wisdom and knows better and has the better judgment. So sometimes God has to bring us to that state of readiness so that we will be able to deal with um, the answer when it comes. And sometimes also um, barriers could feed into God's feedback. Um, yes, let us remember that answers to prayer sometimes don't just fly in the sky. They are coming to human agents. And um, if you have sometimes the heart is not right or the mind or the thinking is not right, and so the Holy Spirit cannot um, use certain agents sometimes, so then the answer sometimes can be blocked. Or some them it might be repressed and things like that. Um, for example, we have in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 12, where um, we see in basically chapter 10, where Daniel the prophet was praying on a matter, and as soon as he began to pray, the Lord had summoned the answer. However, um, the prince of the north kept back the answer. In 20, for 21 days, you know, in, in a struggle. So these things do happen. Sometimes people think that, okay, anything that is for me must be. But we need to understand as well that filter into God's feedback mechanisms are people. The hearts and minds of people have to be right so that the Holy Spirit can tap into sources. Because Paul said, um, I think in Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, all right? And spiritual weakness in high places. We cannot see all the mysteries that surround us. So let's look at some forms of prayer now, forms. Prayer may be expressed differently on some occasions, depending on how one feels. Prayer may be simple petitions lifted to God for everyday needs. All right? Since I was a child, I know of this one. All right? When the week sometime is closed. No, in the middle of the week or so, we do not have the provision basket is empty. And um, my aunt, my grand auntie will, will pray to the Lord all right, for food. So as a child, I saw this, 
All right? And, and um, many people grew up praying to the Lord for, you know, daily provisions. And, of course, it happens still. So these simple petitions lifted to God for everyday needs, um, or we can have heavy petitions in terms of trials and traumas and distress and crisis where we want God to intervene on our behalf. All right. And um, we also have prayer, can be praise and expressions of thanks for, be, for, for or being joyful to God for his acts of manifestation, you know, in the, in, in the life. Sometimes these are some prayers that are answered and we joyful about them. And we have meditation during the study of the word. That is important. I usually hear people say, oh, I don't know what to preach about. Oh, I am exhausted. You know, I'm, I'm finished. I don't have more sources. I have discovered every time you enter the word and you start to pray, there are so many topics that are coming your way. All right. And meditation and dialogue with God verbally or mentally at rest or moving. Sometimes um, you lie on your bed and there's some part in the book of Psalm talking about when you're lying on your bed, you know, meditate on the Lord. Or sometimes you walking, driving, on your way walking, you know, and mentally and so on. People are um, having mental um, um, dialogue and conversation with God and um, fasting. It basically a substantial period that one will remain with God. Some people plan fast. Some people are called into fast. All right. The, the, the spirit calls you into it. Um, and then we have um, forms continue. Sermon preparation. All right. Very essential that the spirit of the Lord guide into what must be said how things must be put the tone and the mood for the sermon because um god has to reach the people with hope and then prayer can be put in situations in god's hand and waiting for him to work out things because you can't work it out or you are confused or you're not sure or you need clarity so you put it in God's hand and you wait. Sometimes what I have experienced is that the answer that comes back to God can be very shocking. And in this manner, I am afraid of God. I am afraid of God in this manner. Um, and then you have other cases. Um, bearing of burdens. Yes, there are some people who are called to bear burdens. And you have to bear this weight for others all right and so you you feel you feel it in your spirit and you have to pray for miracles yes all type of miracles are still raining and we will see a lot more and so um casting out of demons this one is um another very important and one that is very um demons very um, active, you know, in all manner of places. And um, people pray for that and pray for forgiveness. All right, pray for forgiveness and pray for class assignments. You know, some of those assignments can be rather troublesome. And um, you think you cannot make it. Sometimes you just can't see the light, but you pray. I, um, all of us at college, we know about this one. Praying for God's help to be able to see the point and to get the assignment done. And then we have um, the Holy Spirit as the active agent in prayer. And um, in Romans 8, 26 to 28, tells us that the Holy Spirit listens to what we say and intercedes for us before the Father. Um, the text, chapter, verse 20, the text 
within the text, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, our weakness, our inadequacies. Because you see, from Eden, from sin, we lost the light and also lost the knowledge of God. And, 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 and so we don't know. So the Spirit of the Lord helps us. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Some of these groanings, ladies and gentlemen, could be very frightening when you hear the Spirit of the Lord groaning. And um, verse 27, And he that such such as the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, that is, God knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So it is the Spirit that does it for us. And verse 28, And we know not, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So ladies and gentlemen, the active agent in prayer is the Holy Spirit. So God give us a helper. All right. He didn't just tell us to do things on our own. And then we have now prayer as a biblical culture. So look at a little bit of history. Um, so that will enable us <coughs> towards a development of a heavenly dependence culture of communication. A development of a heavenly dependence culture of communication and ways of doing things among the children of God. And beginning from Adam and Eve after sin in Eden and continuing throughout the ages from generation to generation, children of God do things according to the will of God. So children of God must pray until the end of the age allotted for sin and Satan in the earth. Prayer is an active principle, an active culture, an active way of life. And so we have Adam and Eve seed bearing the messianic line. All right, that, that is something. So um, we had Seth, well, well, he had Cain, Abel, we had two, Adam had two children, Cain and Abel, but Ab Cain killed Abel. But Abel was bearing that seed, that prayer line, that seed. And, and so he obeyed God. But Cain was an independent person and, and sought his own way. And so he couldn't understand. But no, Abel obeyed, but Cain killed him. Lack of understanding. And then we had Seth, a man of prayer, from his childhood at the age of seven. All right, history historians tell us, biblical historians. And so um, Seth, Seth taught the generations right down unto Noah. So Adam handed down the prayer line and set, taught it to his generation and handed. And so Noah, interestingly, ladies and gentlemen, when Noah went into the boat, Noah didn't only go in the boat with animals. That's what, you know, we are taught to see animals. And Noah went in with the scrolls, with the biblical knowledge handed down from Adam. And so that was preserved in the boat. But we, we're not seeing that part for mankind. And then we move to Adam and to Esau and to Jacob. And then we reach the Levitical priesthood in Israel. They call out ones, all right, to, to manage um, that uh, messianic line. So we see them 
Yeah, well, um, that is just for you to help you. We, we had two lives, really. We, we had one with the cane and we had one with set coming down, actually. So um, I am dealing with the positive line, positive one today. All right. So we have prayer as a biblical contract continuing. And so the function of the priesthood was to point and lead the nation of Israel according to the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, so the Holy Spirit intercedes according to the will of God. And therefore, the Holy Spirit will only give you dictates according to the will of God. So the heart and mind and being must be in tune. So the priesthood, which was the called out ones, um, was supposed to point and lead the nation of Israel according to the will of God. And there was also a shared mission of, and they also had to share the mission of God to the rest of the surrounding nation so that all men in the earth may know of the Lord. All right. And then we have continuing. Now we're going to look at um, an, uh, um, the, the lifestyle associated with the priesthood and leadership. Um, and I am looking at councils against the use of alcohol. Very, very pertinent as it relates to the, the presence and function of the Holy Spirit in the being of the individuals. It says, both, both priests and leaders were warned against the drinking of alcohol. Why? The Bible says that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is God's agents. Is it the body is supposed to be holy unto the Lord? And so the Holy Spirit in, in the covenant, you know, in the new covenant, we talked about um in, in Ezekiel 36 or 36, yeah, 36 or 38, where God talks, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in your way in my ways. So the Holy Spirit is alive and aboarding in us. You know, as I'm thinking here, how it is that we don't say much about the presence of the Holy Spirit, but we have all the demons residing in, in the bodies of people. And, and we put the demons inside them either uh, too. But we, and then we, we, don't, we don't talk about the spirit of the living God, right? And, and causing us to live holy lives. So the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is God's agent or who is God's agent. And so God also, we saw God also presiding in the sanctuary, which was the holy setting. Um, I have already, I have videos on these um, things already, like for example, the video on transparency theory. And um, who is the sinner? She talked about in the one transparency theory, these with um, the sanctuary. And so um, let's look now at the priests. All right. In Leviticus, Leviticus 10, 9. And the, what is the um, one in there? Drink no wine or strong drink. You or your sons with you. When you go into the tent of meeting, lest you die, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generation, or a law forever throughout your generation. Why does that gentlemen even remember? Jesus was, was actually presiding in the sanctuary. Um, we had the ark, the presence of the ark. He was in the ark, in the Holy of Holies. And therefore, the whole setting of the sanctuary will be holy. And sin cannot exist in the presence of the God. All right? So, alcohol is a perversion of thinking. So, priests should not drink the alcohol. And the leaders, also Proverbs 31, 
4 to 5. Read it from the King James. For the, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Least they drink and forget the laws and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted ones. And so um, you see the leaders are very much important in terms of the decision making. And so when we go and drink alcohol and we get our, 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 our mind, our, our brains perverted, we cannot make good decisions. All right, and so who suffers? The people suffer as a result of it. So he said, be careful, do not drink alcohol. All right? And sometimes, again, it's not only alcohol, but we're dealing with that. All right? And then we have um, the Apostle Paul also counseling um, in Ephesians 5, 18. Do not drink, do not get drunk on wine which leads to recklessness reckless indiscretion indiscretion instead be filled with the holy spirit you see ladies and gentlemen drinking of alcohol is a distortion of, of your whole um system and so um you cannot make good decisions and so leaders are counseled also um other um commentaries include bear all right as part of the alcoholic beverage. But, um, so now let's continue. Um, let's look now at Elizabeth and John the Baptist. All right, still continuing on the alcohol. Elizabeth was of the seed of Aaron, which is a high priest. All right. So the high priest, as you see before, his line was not supposed to drink the alcohol. So we see um, Elizabeth um, in that line. And so she is called to bear John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Now in Luke one fifteen, we see that John the Baptist, talking of John the Baptist, for he was, he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall never take wine or strong drink and he will be filled with the holy spirit even from his mother's womb i think also samson also was not supposed to drink wine samson's mother um so you see ladies and gentlemen wine and the holy spirit are not congruent all right it will provoke the functioning of the Holy Spirit. It is an unholy thing to do. And then we have um, continuing. We have on John the Baptist. The prophet of the Most High he is called. For thou, for thou shall go before the face of the Lord. And prepare his way. Luke one seventy six. And we saw in, in um, the, the book. The, the um in the early the gospels how john the baptist was leading the gathering the people and preparing them for the way of the lord calling for repentance and baptism to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to give to guide our feet into the way of peace so luke 179 so ladies and gentlemen Alcohol is a, not a good symbol um, for the ministry. Okay? And then we have here Mary and Jesus continuing on the same. Um, now, Mary was of the seed of King David. Okay? So now that's she again, King David. And we see that in Luke. 135 so that's that's the kingly line all right so thou shall that holy thing the angel is explaining to mary um which is in you shall be um uh, rich shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god all right referring to the inception of mary conception of mary 
with Jesus. And she's saying that now Mary live an exemplary life because she was called if she were not living an exemplary life. God, God would not have called her to bear this holy thing. And Luke 1, 56, and Mary abode um, with Elizabeth. Who is there? That is Elizabeth. Um, three months. Because the angel told her to go and check out Elizabeth. And return. And then after the three months, she returned to her house. So it is quite obvious that Elizabeth would have also taught Mary what the angel had told her about the wine and so forth. And so, Jesus and prayer. So, God, Jesus and prayer. Now, Jesus succeeded where Adam and Eve failed when temptation was first brought to them in Eden by Satan. All right? And, and, and that is in my video, um, Who is the Sinner, Sheep or Goat? Jesus' life was one of prayer. From childhood to youth and adulthood. And uh, we see in Luke 2.52, it says that Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God of, in favor with God and man as a result of his culture of prayer. Now, Jesus reinforced prayer as a lifestyle because all of this prayer from generation to generation coming down, it, it was actually pointing also or keeping the people in the messianic line and keeping holiness in, in the earth. And so part of that, that element of prayer was not just for things that you want from God, but um, the coming of the Messiah. All right, so Jesus Christ came, and Jesus Christ, when he came, he lived the same lifestyle, and he reinforced it more, all right? So we see him. So Jesus' attitude of prayer teaches that in order to live successfully in the kingdom of God on earth, one needs to pray at all times. Now, um, let's look at Jesus' prayer times. No, um, I'm missing a slide. Let's look at Jesus' prayer times. Okay, this one is Jesus' prayer times. Now, in Mark 1.35, we see that very early in the morning, Jesus used to get up and go to a quiet place, and he prayed. Now, when he prayed, now he will get that communication he will receive from the Father, matters pertaining for the day. And then he will go about his business. But ladies and gentlemen, this part here, while Jesus is in ministry, that is prayer too, you know. Yes, prayer during Jesus' ministry was one of action. Jesus was doing all these things, healing the people and doing all these sets of miracles and so forth. All these were activities of prayer. And um, in Matthew 14, 23, <coughs> we saw that well, it implies that in the evening, at when the, when the work is finished, we we'll go back to a mountain and pray. Sometimes we see his disciples with him. Sometimes in this case, he was alone. All right? But pray, so he will open up. And then he will go about the activities for the day. And then at the close of the day, he will um, give thanks. And I say, Jesus used to sing. Jesus used to sing sweetly. All right. And then now, let's look at. So now Jesus teaches us to pray. All right. And so Jesus taught. <laughs> It's very common, our Father, when you pray, say this, our Father who is in heaven, <coughs> hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. So we acknowledge God for who he is. We give him the glory and the respect for who he is. And then 
be continued. Give us this day our daily bread. So then we acknowledge him for his superior wisdom and our heavenly father. And then we ask, all right, give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. All right. So he said, give us, um, in, in Matthew 6, he talks, references also made to this daily bread, you know, sufficient unto the day. Um, so, and, and God saying, don't worry. All right. It's the same principle. Don't worry about what you will eat and drink, etc. Look at the birds and the other animals. They don't toil or reap. But our Heavenly Father feed at them. How much more important are we to Him? So basically, give us this day our daily bread. So basic exercise of faith. Forgive us our sins. All right? Jesus knows. Um, so forgive us our sins. And as we forgive um, those who sin against us. So we must also forgive. And I find that human beings are very harsh towards each other. You know, God is not so, you know, God is a tender, loving, he's very strict. I mean, I know the word strict. God's holiness makes him precise. And, and that brings out a kind of fear. But God is a very kind, gentle person. Right? And he gives understanding. So we too, we must give understanding and forgive. All right? And lead us not into temptation. Watch it. Lead us not into temptation. Eh? It is, Jesus had made a reference, um, said that we, he, we sin by our own lust. God doesn't lead anybody to sin. And we sin by our own lust. No wonder many times people don't want to face God because they want to sin. So they don't want God's goodness. They want to sin. They sin by their own lust. But deliver us from the evil one. That evil one is Satan. We see him since in Eden. And other historical writers, in addition to what is read in the Bible, give us good picture as to some of the deeds, wicked deeds of Satan as he tempts and tempts and tempts and how they always have to pray and pray and pray, all right? And how he comes with all forms of deception, okay? So pray is vital, you know, once the enemy is around. So he said, lead us not um, and deliver us from the evil one. And then we have um, Jesus also wants to share himself and his resources with us. And so Jesus prayed. It's in John 17, 24. Jesus prayed for all believers. He said, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a thought that will blow your mind. Well, we have friendship. Jesus prayed and he said, I want to share. We share with friends. Uh, but, but Jesus is not only sharing with um, friends, eh? Jesus, because the call is for more people to become Jesus' friends. But, um, so Jesus, um, to those that love him, to those that accept his call, that's what you're talking about. So when the mission goes out and people accept the call of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ we share his friendship. He wants to share himself. All right. So he wants to be our friends. All right. So he prayed for all. He said, I want you to be where I am. So he is sharing his realm. Jesus is in heaven. And he said, I want you to come there. 
So that's in Revelation. And um, First Thessalonians, we see him say, I go to prepare a place for you. All right, I go to prepare. Some places call it rooms and mansions. All right, rooms and mansions is going to prepare. But I go to prepare a place for you because I want to share myself with you. I want to share my resources with you. Okay, so I want you to be my friend. Okay, and I have recognition. Wow, Jesus recognizes me. Right, yes, Jesus recognizes us. And so he wants us to be sons and he, daughters of his. So <coughs> he wants you to share his resources and share his position and wealth, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we talk of wealth in this world. This world's wealth cannot be compared with the wealth that God has. And this wealth is in his pure state, you know. And we see it in the book of Revelation, all right? And um, we see those minerals, pure, all right? They don't have to go through processing, manufacturing processes, all right? And um, God also resources that, that vast realm of universe. Now, um, Elon Musk, for example, talks about he wants to go to Mars, and he's anxious, he likes curiosity. And he, do you know that that's, that anxiousness is biblical? He wants to see other worlds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, who else is offering the freedom to go to other worlds than Jesus Christ? And to see not just what they are looking at in the stethoscope and, and, and going with the things that they make on earth, God has vastness and, and, and you know, the means of traveling is not like what we have here. So ladies and gentlemen, the greatest attraction for men like Elon Musk is Jesus Christ and his offering. All right. And Satan knows it because I have a video, um, um, faith versus uh, faith of foolishness. And then we have another one where we see that, you know, Satan wanted all these. And so he wanted to overtake God to take over. All right. But God had to throw him out because God will control. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to people like Elon Musk who wants eternal curiosity. God has it. In great abundance, far beyond what your imagination could behold. It will blow your mind like the Apostle Paul. Strike him down dead on the road. And then romance. All those people who like adventure, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says that the right hand of God are pleasures forevermore. So, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the song says, the song says, friendship with Jesus. Who is a better friend? One that does not deceive us, one that does not leave us alone, one that does not lie for us. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we can trust to pray to this one, Jesus. And he has given us the Holy Spirit who is our helper. So looking at the words, can look at two of them at the same time. Looking at the words, it says, um, friendship, oh, a friend of Jesus. Oh, what bliss that one so vile as I should ever have a friend like this to lead me to the sky. Jesus, trust us. Friendship with Jesus, fellowship divine. 
Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Jesus is a friend of mine. A friend when life's race is over. A friend when earth is past. A friend to meet on heaven's show. A friend home at last. When home at last. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Friendship with Jesus. Fellowship divine. Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Jesus is a friend of mine. See you, ladies and gentlemen, in the next video. Be encouraged with the times. Amen.